Anyone else is like always losing stuff? Like I don't lose my keys or my wallet. No, I lose things that are related to aquascaping or to filming. So I just filmed those few clips with cleaning. I wanted to grab a mic and do the intro. I can't find this small mic cable. Searched the whole house, couldn't find it. So I went to the shop to buy a new one. I get to the shopping mall, the whole building is being evacuated, alarms going off, everybody's standing outside. Luckily nothing bad happened. So I got a new cable, we can finally start. I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but just felt like sharing. But anyway, today's a very exciting day. We're finally going to get started with the hardscape of the Big Shallow. I've already uh, been playing a little bit with the hardscape kind of off camera, just to see in which direction I want to go. And I think I have a pretty good idea. So a top tip, if you want to get rid of those calcium stains on your glass, just rub it with a little bit of vinegar. Cleans it right off. So this is the main piece of wood that we're working with. I already showed you this last time in the previous episode. This is Centurion wood from Rio. Absolutely beautiful piece. And I quite like it this way, um, upwards towards the shelf. But my significant other half, she didn't really like it. She said it would look better that way, towards that, that side of the wall. Yeah, I think this way is nice as well. Also in the previous video, I asked you guys on your opinion, what you think, which way it should be. A lot of mixed reactions. So I think I have to make a decision myself. And it's going to actually going to be neither one of those two. Yeah, so the thing is that this piece of the wood right here, this side, is in my opinion the most beautiful. It has the most character, it has the most uh, branches sort of. On this side, we just have a very long and straight stump. So of course it looks very artsy to have it coming out of the water, looks very cool. But I think it would be a shame not to have that side inside the tank actually. Yeah, so basically more like this. I think this looks really cool. I think we have a very nice flow from right to left and we still have wood coming out over there. We have wood coming out over there so we can use some immersed plants on that as well. The thing is that over here we have the shelf and this is where I spend most of my time sitting. So it looks actually really cool from this side as well, you know? So if you're sitting here on a chair, yeah, I would really enjoy that view. But as I mentioned in the previous video, the hardscape is uh, sponsored by Rio and actually together with the wood, they also sent me some very beautiful rocks. So I, can, I basically have two types of rocks that I can choose from in this layout. Uh, first one is this rock right here. So this stuff right here is I think called Eclipse Stone. It's basically like a huge river boulder that they literally just sawed in half. So we can definitely place this on the bottom. I'll just lay flat on the bottom like this. And that would look very cool. It really has that river style layout. I quite like that. But they also sent me another type of rock which is this stuff right here. They call this um, Darwin Black Lava. So it's just like regular black lava rock, but it's a bit more detailed, has a lot more character to it. I quite like this. I think I'm leaning more towards this right now. Well, I don't really feel comfortable placing these rocks directly on the glass. So I just placed a few of these um, yeah, small foam leveling mats underneath just to kind of protect it a little bit. It's actually the foam mat that came originally with this tank. It's white and I didn't really like it, so I placed it with a black one. So this is just a bit of a protection. Okay, this is still far from how I want it, but this is just a general idea. Just to basically make like a wall with lava rocks actually a little bit further from the from the back glass. And then this area here we can fill with substrate and then we can have plants in there growing out of the water. That's basically the, the idea. And then those plants will be taking up this space right here. We can have like plants on the wood as well, a bit lower. And then the front area we will have mostly aquatic plants of course. But now we just need to make a nice composition with the rocks and the wood all mixed in together. That's probably going to take a while and a lot of heavy lifting. Hmm, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like where this is going. So all the way on the right side, I basically used the, in my opinion, the best looking rock with the most detail. I'm going to use that one to close the line. And I think the piece of wood kind of fits perfectly in there as well. Then there's another rock underneath there to kind of just support it and to close the gap. And two more big rocks 
on this side just to make a bit of a wall so we can fill this area up with substrate and then another very big and beautiful rock on this side kind of just close the line here and then we can have it go down and have a nice cosmetic sand in the foreground here so right now i only used about five very large lava rocks so we need more smaller lava rocks in front as well of course and i actually have a bit more wood as well and i think i have the perfect piece to kind of go on top here just add another layer Oof. <laughs> wow. I think, uh, I think I'm starting to like this. And just imagine all of this wood covered it with moss. I think some ferns as well. Actually, I really don't know much about terrestrial plants. So that's going to be interesting to find those as well. But yeah, I think if we have some nice moss on here, some ferns, stuff like that, I think that's going to look amazing. More moss on this lava rock here. This one will also be just, just above the water line. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so far it's, uh, I really like where this is going. Okay, I made a few more changes kind of off camera. Well, kind of off camera, basically. Uh, I raised this rock right here. This was actually a suggestion from my girlfriend. She said this needs to be higher. And I think she has a very good point. So now we have, have a little bit of rock coming out of the water as well. Super nice. We can put some moss on there as well. Of course, this is going to be replaced with a lava rock. This is just temporarily. And I've added another piece of wood. So now we have got three pieces of wood in there in total. I thought, just felt like there was something missing here in this front area. So I think it's getting better and better with time. I think the next step is to go in with some smaller rocks. So we, right now we only use very large lava rocks. And over here I have a few more smaller rocks. It's actually a different type of rock. Uh, I'm not sure what this is called. It's also lava, but yeah, it has a slightly different color. So right now these are very gray, but once they get wet, they will be black as well. So I'm really pleased with the layout so far. I don't think I want to make any more like big changes to the layout. I'm quite happy with how it is. Um, but this was very much a trial run. So I think the next step is to actually take everything out again and then kind of go for the real deal. Also pour in a substrate, start closing the gaps, um, start gluing things together, stuff like that. So yeah, I think, we're, I think we're doing good. Am I sweating? It's like 26 degrees in the house here. Okay, so you guys know that I usually always use Aquasol as a substrate. This time I'm actually going to try something different. This is a new product from Rio. It's called Wetland Ionian. And this basically has the same benefits as Aquasol. So this also has nutrients. It also uh, lowers the pH a little bit. But this is much more tough. So this doesn't break down as easily as Aquasol. Aquasol can really turn into powder quite quickly. I think this is more like a yeah, basically small volcanic rock. So I'm very curious to test this out. Okay, so this process was a little bit uh, tedious and boring, so I didn't really use the camera much, but we basically closed all the gaps there with small lava rocks, a little bit of filter floss underneath over there as well, in between the rocks here. Let me show you from the side as well. Yeah, so basically all the gaps are closed with so either small lava rocks or filter floss just to make sure we don't have any soil rolling forward. Actually, I'm really happy with this part right here. It looks really cool. The black diamond lava rock. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Lots of texture going on. And I can already see this like being planted with small nubias, mosses, other terrestrial plants coming out as well. Okay, I think that's a good layer here. Actually, this stuff is really good for what I'm trying to achieve here because it's a little bit bigger than Aquasol. It's not so round, so it doesn't really like fall into these small gaps. It doesn't really roll forward. It really just 
that kind of just stays in place. Okay guys, it's now the next day. I woke up this morning and I walked past the tank and I immediately got a big smile on my face. I'm really happy with how this turned out, but today we're gonna make it even better. So I was pretty tired yesterday, so the only thing I ended up doing was basically gluing everything together, just to make sure that this big piece of wood is not gonna float and to make sure that our dam with lava rocks is not gonna shift or collapse and our substrate is gonna pour out. So of course I used my favorite technique with the uh, liquid super glue and cotton pads. So everything is pretty much secure right now, so that's good. Plan for today is to uh, work on some small details. And I also want to add in the sand. And I want to fill it up with water and get the filter running. So about the details, I have a few more products from Rio that we can kind of use for that. Uh, first one is this stuff right here. This is called Elder Roots. So these are basically just small twigs that we can yeah, just kind of use. I think for the lava rocks, for example. So we can use small twigs and kind of guide it. All the way down just basically make it look like roots uh, same thing over here same thing on the left side as well i think they will look pretty cool maybe have some on the uh, the lower section as well underwater just to make it look more natural now here's an example i added this small piece right here so basically just have this coming down here like that you know i think that will look pretty cool and then i also have this stuff right here this is uh, druid gravel and i'm not sure but i think this is like small lava rocks it's a little bit dirty, so actually let me wash it a little bit. Here we go. So it's not exactly the same, but it still has a bit of that uh, gray and bluish tint. So I think it will be nice if we just kind of like spread this around the base over here, for example. And then have the lava rocks, then the uh, gravels, and then our cosmetic sand. Now speaking of sand, Ryu also has this very cool new product, which is called Biotope Beds. Which is basically just a bag with mixed type of gravel and sand, so you don't have to buy everything separately anymore. So this is the uh, glacier, kind of reminds me of those fast flowing river streams. They have this one, the Biotobeds Mere, 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 I don't know. This kind of, I think this will be cool in like a black water setup. It has like small twigs, small pebbles, and like a really yellowish sand. So I think this will be very cool in a black water setup. And they also have this one, the Nautilus Light. This one is pretty cool. It has like uh, small shells in there, very light sand, like broken shells. It looks very natural. I think this will be really, really cool in like a Tangayika biotope, something like that. But it doesn't really fit with what I have in mind for this scape. So I think I'm just going to use my own sand that I already have. All right, it's now like two hours later. I've been busy making a mess in here. I basically just had to prepare the filter and I also have to swap the filter over to the other side because it used to be on the left side with the outflow on the left side as well. But now I'm gonna have the outflow on the right side. If anybody's curious how I set up the filter, I basically have a coarse blue sponge underneath, then the red brown sponge that is less coarse above that, then some white filter floss, then like three or four baskets with the Aquario Neo Media Soft. And one more small basket with white filter floss on top, that's it. I've also just washed the sand, it was a little bit dirty, so I had to wash it. So unfortunately we don't have the satisfaction of pouring in dry sand. It's okay. And after the sand is in, we can start filling it up with water. Sand is always a bit tricky in my opinion. I mean, it can I really either make, it can really make or break an aquascape, you know? So I just have to see how it looks once it's filled in with water. And then if I don't like it, I'll just siphon it out and replace it with something else. So I basically had two types of sand left over and I kind of just mixed them together. One was very light, the other one was a little bit more, yeah, orangey, I guess. So let's see how this looks.
There it is guys, the hardscape of the Big Cello 2.0 is done. I'm really happy with the end result. I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with how the aquatic part turned out. I think it looks very, very natural, especially since the, uh, the wood started to release, release some tannins. Not a whole lot, but it's definitely some color to the water. A little bit cloudy as well, but uh, yeah, it will prob probably clear up by tomorrow. To be honest with you, I was not too sure about the uh, cosmetic sand with the Druid gravel and the lava rocks. Not sure how that combination will work out, but I think it looks really, really good. Especially if you look over here, sand, gravel, rocks. I think that looks very, very natural also with the small twigs. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really liking it. So I still uh, some tint from the water. Not sure how bad it will be because I never used this wood before. Uh, but we can always use some uh, some special filter media to clear that out. Yeah, filter is doing good. It's now blowing quite fast all the way to the left. I think I want to reduce the flow a little bit from the uh, the Aqua Rio Neo flow, so we can add a special attachment to kind of reduce the flow a little bit. I also want to lower the intake so it sits lower, so it's picking up the waste from there, you know. And I couldn't find the the skimming part from the Aqua Rio pipe, so I'm currently using this. Uh, Oasis skimmer to kind of temporarily keep the water surface clean. Yeah, top part. Yeah, this just needs a lot of plants to uh, to look really good. I think right now we just have two sort of bare stumps. Still looks good, but just needs some greenery, you know. So I think right now I just have to uh, start doing a lot of research on terrestrial plants, kind of yeah, more immersed plants that we can use, pond plants maybe. Overall, just uh, plants that can. Be planted in wet soil and yeah, stay above the water. So that's going to be interesting. Of course, we also have to decide what kind of fish we're going to put in here. And to be honest with you, I haven't really decided on that just yet. Uh, nothing is really set in stone. I was thinking to put the same fish back in. So we have the amber tetra still, and we also still have the pygmy quarries. Yeah, they are currently staying in here. So on this side, we have the amber tetras. I think there's about 30 of them or so in this tank. And in this aquarium, we have the pygmy quarries that are very skittish constantly hiding in the uh, rotales in the back. You can see a few over there. Yeah, I think we can definitely add more fish than that in this tank. So yeah, let me know guys in the comments, what kind of fish would you put in the shallow? And you know what? I'm actually really enjoying that the water is slightly tinted. So maybe we just have to stick with that and just turn this into a black water biotope shallow, something like that. I don't know. We can add more leaf litter on the bottom, some small twigs. Yeah, I think that would actually be really cool. I don't know, so many ideas, uh, we just have to take some time to think about that. Now before we wrap up this video, I just want to give another shout out to Wio for supplying me with the hardscape. I mean, this wouldn't have been possible without them. And they really made it easy for me to create a beautiful layout. I mean, with such beautiful materials, it's, it's easy to make something that looks good, you know. So yeah, massive shout out to them. I'll leave all their details in the description, definitely check that out. Um, they are a wholesale company, so don't start contacting them, that, contacting them directly, but um, contact your local fish store and tell them to reach out to them and start ordering some of their beautiful hardscape. But yeah, guys, I think that's it. Hope you really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed making the hardscape. And now onwards with the planting. Let's get started. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Take care.